Are you crazy? You can't buy an 8 gigabyte GPU. How are you meant to play poorly optimized games? That single sentence just outlined both the argument and the counter argument for this whole GPU VRAM controversy. Let me explain. A lot of information has been going around recently, from hardware unboxed. Now consider eight gigabytes of VRAM as entry level. Two Linus tech tips. Eight gigs is enough, says AMD. Unfortunately, that's not entirely true. Even myself and other channels stating that eight gigabyte graphics cards are having issues in certain circumstances in specific games. And it is true. The example that I showed was in Hogwarts Legacy. Asset swapping like a kid trying to choose an ice cream flavor but people have been quick to point out that these situations are not representative of most and are typically only found in extremely demanding or poorly optimized games. So it's time to understand the issue. Does this whole eight gigabyte VRAM problem affect games people actually play? Is this the planned obsolescence of your GPU in real time? Or has this whole eight gigabyte VRAM situation been blown out of proportion? Because this is one of those unfortunate situations where being right doesn't really matter. Let me explain. So you're thinking about an upgrade, but prices are holding you back. Well, there's two ways that I can help you out with that. You can either offset the cost by selling what you currently own, or even make your upgrade more affordable with today's video sponsor, Jawa. Jawa is an online marketplace specifically designed for gamers by gamers, where users and listings are pre-approved to make sure that buyers are not being taken advantage of and prices are fair, which I think we can all get behind. But what if you want to make money instead? Well, sellers can also benefit in a number of ways. Jawa takes a smaller fee compared to eBay, and we'll even outright buy your graphics card from you if you need a quicker, hassle-free sale. But these are only my favorite features of the platform. They also have a vibrant community, commission builds, and a 4.7 Trustpilot rating. So what are you waiting for? Make your next upgrade more affordable by clicking on the Jawa sponsor link below. So to investigate the impact of this whole alleged VRAM issue, let's load up some of the more demanding games in Steam's most popular games list to give us three games that are extremely popular while also being harder to run compared to something like CSGO and use the RTX 3070, a powerful eight gigabyte card that has been shown to be an issue. Game number one and ranked five on Steam is GTA 5. What we're going to do is max it out at 1080p and clearly, oh, no issue well below eight gigabytes. Okay, well, number 11 is Modern Warfare 2 and maxed out at 1080p and, uh, oh, no issue again. Hmm, how about Red Dead Redemption 2 at number 39? Well, um, still no issue, maxed out at 1080p. So why is everyone getting so worked up by this? Is it even a problem? Well, let's take a look at Hogwarts Legacy, which apparently has plummeted to number 94, but still a top 100 game. What we are seeing here at 1080p max settings on everything is the memory buffer has officially run out of room. So what the game is doing is swapping assets in and out of memory, producing these visual anomalies or artifacts. But this is only an example of what could happen and could also show itself as massive frame time delays or stuttering and also instability in rare cases. So, okay. It is a problem in some situations and it is reproducible, but it also seems to be an issue for a select few games and definitely not all. So the question then becomes, what kind of game and at what settings does this situation occur? And is this a problem with the game or the GPU itself? Then we have to ask ourselves, is this a now problem, a future problem or not a problem at all? Well, the answer is actually quite obvious, but it's probably going to surprise many of you. Let me show you. The general consensus is that the games these issues are most often seen is limited to the current most demanding games and also poorly optimized ports at max settings. In fact, for every example you've seen this be a problem in, there is a simple solution to enable upscaling or turn down the detail at 1080p on a $500 GPU, which is a hard pill to swallow. So that's the problem, right? Because you can fix it by adjusting settings, it's obviously game and settings dependent, making the temptation here to label the entire situation as not being a GPU memory amount issue, which absolves the GPU manufacturers from any kind of responsibility, but an issue with the developers not optimizing the game properly. And it is true that optimizations would mitigate a lot of these issues, and they already have done so far. So that's the answer. 
right? Eight gigabytes is fine, just don't do a poor job optimizing your game. And I agree, but only to an extent, because this is one of those situations where being right doesn't actually matter. Let me explain. Have you ever been in a situation at work, at school, or with your parents where you were right about something, but it doesn't change the fact that you still have to deal with the negative impacts of the situation? In fact, anyone who has had someone in a position of power gaslight them knows exactly what I'm talking about. You're right, but they don't care and it doesn't really change anything. This is that. For everyone saying that it's the game developer's fault, not the GPU manufacturer's, you have a very legitimate argument. But it doesn't change the fact that 8GB is currently not enough for some demanding games, even at 1080p, which doesn't bode well for higher resolutions and isn't going to get better as more demanding games are released. If it's a problem now, it's going to be more of a problem down the line. Also affecting the resale value of these cards, which is likely going to depreciate disproportionately compared to models with higher VRAM capacity. And the funny thing is, at least in part, the original catalyst for this issue still comes from the GPU manufacturers and is one of the best GPU features we've seen in a long time. So before we discuss planned obsolescence and how I would personally figure out how much video memory I need when purchasing a new GPU, we need to understand the origin of what I see as the biggest catalyst for this issue and why it's probably only going to get worse. Part of the problem when it comes to ports is that consoles have more memory nowadays and that's what these games were developed for. But potentially more of a problem is upscaling and frame generation technologies. Things like Nvidia DLSS, AMD FSR, and Intel XESS, which can currently work in two ways. I go into this in a bit more detail in this video, but essentially both types of implementations have the GPU use an algorithm to increase frame rate or resolution by allowing the GPU to render the game at a lower resolution and scale up or approximate algorithmically generated frames in between the real ones or a mix of these two solutions. These are great features for increasing the frame rate and or fidelity in otherwise too demanding games. But you see the problem here. If I, as a game developer, know that we are implementing these features, there is much less of an incentive for me to optimize for lower end hardware configurations. Because I mean, well gamers should just turn on upscaling and that fixes the issue, which is a perspective I do not like. A feature like upscaling shouldn't be expected. It should be appreciated. And game level optimization should still be important. But here's a little insight, just so that you're aware. I used to work as a developer, not in consumer gaming, but in web and VR. But I can still confirm, for every platform that I've worked on, for every job that I've worked at, optimizations were basically last on the priority list. And if we had a tool to self-optimize software, we would be working harder and faster on features, which is just the reality of business. And it's not even necessarily a bad thing. It's only really a problem when the experience is impacted because of it. So where does that leave us now, given that this isn't going away soon and will likely only get worse? Well, we should really discuss how much video memory you actually need, as well as the speculation of planned obsolescence by GPU manufacturers. Now, I don't typically consider myself a tin-foiled hat kind of guy. I try to take a step back and look at the situation from all angles. But I do see a lot of the theories in the comments section. And a comment that I have seen pop up a few times is that Nvidia specifically has been planning for GPU obsolescence for a while now by limiting memory capacity. But I feel like this is just a business strategy and not planned obsolescence because the device is not non-functional and there is a fix. But I also agree that there is a clear way to profit from this memory issue. And Nvidia are very good at capitalizing on things like this. $100 for an eight gigabyte upgrade to G6 memory is extreme. So the question then becomes, how much video memory do you actually need? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to understand how video memory is used because it is not as simple as slapping on as much as possible onto a GPU and calling it a day because that would honestly be a waste. When you are gaming, the video memory stores graphics data and assets to be used by the GPU core. 
How much you need is very much going to be game or application specific and similar to system memory like DDR4 or 5 modules. Not having enough hurts performance, but having more than you need doesn't lead to higher performance and paying for more memory than you need is technically wasting money if you never utilize it. But there is value in knowing that you do have some buffer room to grow into as you need. So more memory is better as long as it is possible to justify it. So as I will always recommend, look up the performance of the GPUs you were deciding between in the most demanding games at the resolutions you play. Then pay attention to how much memory those games use and consider a potential buffer room for more demanding future games or upgrading to a higher resolution. It is impossible to give you a number for the future or know exactly what the future will hold. But for something like the 4070 Ti, 16 gigabytes would have been nice in my opinion. And I feel that 12 should be more of the baseline for lower to mid range GPUs this generation, if you don't want to run into this issue further down the line. So given that Nvidia typically has less memory for the price, does that mean that you should be giving up on them and move over to AMD or Intel? Well, we found that there are more reasons to go for an Nvidia GPU compared to other manufacturers, but that doesn't mean that they are all relevant to you and going for another manufacturer may be a much better option for the things that you value most. So if you want to know the real reasons to buy Nvidia, AMD or Intel, you can check that video out by clicking here. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated and I hope you have an amazing day.